Well, hi folks, this is Darren with My RV Works. Today we're in Squim, Washington, and we're working on an air conditioner. Uh, this one's a Coleman. Uh, we'll give you the model number here in a minute. Here's the symptoms. Um, the blower fan is working. Now, this has got two motors and all this kind of stuff. Actually, three if you're counting the compressor as a motor. The, uh, this motor here is working. It's the one that is the blower that blows the air across the absorber coil. Evaporation coil. I'm getting refrigerators and air conditioners in my brain. But what's happening is this motor's not engaging and nor is a compressor. Now, full disclosure, the other night at 10 o'clock at night, I climbed up on the roof. It was misty. This roof was as slick as ice. And um, the, uh, uh, to diagnose what's wrong with this. And so um, it, this is a warranty job. So we needed to diagnose it first to find out, is this going to go warranty or not? Um, Warranty works on three principles, complaint, cause, and correction. Well, what's, what's the problem here? We weren't sure where the problem lied. And so at 10 o'clock Saturday night, I'm up here trying to figure out what's wrong with it, and we determined what the problem was. So I already know the problem, but I'm gonna bring you along because there's something that I feel like it had value to you in Darren's method of troubleshooting. If you don't like my method, then go watch somebody else's video. But if you like my method, keep watching. Now on these um, air conditioners, what we're gonna come across is um, we're going to follow the trail. The air conditioner is going to have two trails. I'm going to work while I'm talking and my esteemed and lovely wife, Anne is going to be my camera person. Um, but I am losing daylight and I still got a couple more things I need to get done here. So I am a little pressed for time, but I do believe I can help you guys out. Um, okay. That is a three eighths nut on these things. This comes off. Okay. Uh, right there. There we go. Okay. And then this lifts off. What I want to show you is right here. So if you're going to begin your trail of troubleshooting any air conditioner, we have um, wiring diagrams. And we'll be looking at the wiring diagrams, but let's say you don't know how wiring diagrams work. We're going to start here. Okay. And... Um, Take our wing nuts off. Like I said, I am gonna go a little fast because I am running out of time and I'm running out of daylight. So uh, stay with me. I've got another air conditioner video you can watch. Okay. Here's our writing schematic. Okay, now let me find something to point with. There we go. Okay, that purple wire is a show. We're after this purple wire right here. And um, it's gonna be the compressor relay wire. Okay, now let's see, here's purple. Let's see where purple goes. Okay, purple's gonna go to the compressor right here. But let's say I didn't know that. Let's just follow the trail. We're gonna follow the trail of 12 volts, okay? So if you've watched my videos, you know my whole method of troubleshooting is following trails. It's kind of my own little, makes sense to me. Here's 120 volts coming into my circuit right here. These are the 12 volt control circuits that come from the thermostat. This guy's a freeze sensor, okay? So you'll see he's plugged in right here to the coil right here. And then all these wires are gonna go to the thermostat. Now this is a Coleman. Dometic's gonna be a little different. Okay, Dometic is going to have a phone cord on most of theirs. Uh, their single zones are going to have an orange control wire. But let's follow the trail. Let's follow the black wire right here, right? Because we know this is going to be connected to a circuit breaker down below. Follow the black wire. Here's my black wire right here coming in to the wire nut. And I'm going to land on this relay. What's on the other side of the relay? The purple wire, isn't it? Okay, so we're going to come in to my circuit to the black wire therefore i will and, and and the purple wire is the wire that i'm after for my compressor and it goes through my connector and it comes out the other side as a you guessed it purple wire in there somewhere there's my purple wire okay so what we need to do is we need to verify we have 120 volts on the black wire and if we're troubleshooting our compressor and we want to know is it my control board 
or is it something else? You can touch these two wires together and send 120 from the black wire to there. Don't get yourself shocked and all this kind of stuff. But you can connect these two wires together um, and then you're going to send 120 down. Now, if you've done that, haven't you bypassed this relay and haven't you bypassed the thermostat and all this other kind of stuff? You're basically forcing the issue. For troubleshooting purposes only, please, don't run your air conditioner like this. So, if 120 is on my black wire and my thermostat's working, my relays should engage, and I should send 120 down my purple wire. This one is my fan, okay? Now here we have high and low. The black wire here and the red wire here are high fan and low fan, okay? I'm sorry, blue is reversing valve, I believe, on this. Um, I believe blue is my reversing valve. And um, here I have the, the high fan and low fan. So if you're therm if you're, we did a job just the other day and uh, their fan was not working on low, but it was working on high, and we traced it to the board problem, and there was no voltage coming out on the low fan side. So in that instance, you replace your board. So we're gonna follow the trail of 12 volts. I'm sorry, 120 volts. We're gonna follow the purple wire. Purple wire goes through here, and it's gonna go around and around and around and around, and, around, and then it's gonna go over to, over to here, okay? So let's move our party over to this side because this is where the 12 volts is gonna go. Uh, that, to me, that's gonna be a square, it looks like, or maybe a 20, T25, yeah, that's a T25. Okay. And we need to get to that. Inside of here is gonna be our, um, what are they called, capacitors. And we have another schematic. We're gonna look at the schematic pretty a little bit closer, but if you look here between these two schematics and you take your time, you can pretty much figure out the problem is revealed in this schematic. So where's our purple coming? Purple's coming right down here. Here's purple right here. So here's my 120 volts right here. And again, the, circ the, the symptom is that the, this and the compressor are not starting right that's the complaint that's what's wrong okay and looking at our schematic it's a purple wire that controls both of these so our purple wire goes to this terminal block and becomes a brown wire okay so now we're following brown i didn't make the colors up but purple becomes brown because our terminal block purple is bonded to ground brown is going to go over here to this thing over here called a freeze sensor okay come around over here here's brown going in right brown's going in if you look at the schematic here, here's our free switch. Orange is normally open. Black is normally closed. Okay? So that is to say, if I am above freezing, according to this, I'm going to allow power to come through the brown wire and go out the black wire. If I am below freezing, then I'm going to come in on the brown and I'm going to go out on the orange. Well, we're certainly above freezing. I'm sweating. So we're going to come in on brown and go out on black, okay? So here we're going to come in on brown, out on black. We started off as a purple. Actually, over here we started off as a black. Went through our relay, became purple. Came over here, purple became brown. Brown went over here. Brown now becomes black. You with me? We're following a trail. So it's a wild beast, and we have to do... If we're skilled technicians, and, and it, it, if, if you're not a skilled technician, stay out of here. Have a skilled technician do it. But... If you're going to go hunting something like 120 volts here, you might have a river, you might have a mountain, you might have a stream, you might need to crawl through some bush. Um, it's never easy. And so we're hunting here. And so our color codes are changing. I'm sorry, but that's just embrace the suck, right? So we're going to come in on brown. We're going to go out on black. Now, where does black go? Black's coming. Okay, I see black moving right here. Here's black right here. Okay, so now we're coming in on black. And looks like we're going to go into a relay. Okay. So let's take that relay out and take a look at that. One thing I do want to do is check. I'll make links to the tools I'm using down below. So all this is dead. If this was not dead, it'd be beeping. 
Okay. So all I'm going to do is hit that screw right there. Now we're going to pull this guy out. This is called an ice cube relay. Well, Darren, how come you're not testing your, compa your capacitors? Because I don't think that's the problem. If the capacitors were the problem, then we wouldn't have the problem that the customer's complaining about. The customer's saying these aren't even trying to start. So we were following black. Let's find our black again. It's this one right here. Okay, see it's moving? So we're going to come up here. Black is now going to go to this pin right here. But he's also going to pick up on blue. So not only is black energized if I'm below freezing, but blue is energized as well. And that little brown, that little gray wire inside, looks like he's my common wire. I can see him through the glass here, the clear, and he's coming out on this pin, which was this one. Okay, when I pulled this loose, this came out, okay? So there is my black wire hot. He's gonna go through here, so we're gonna follow two trails. The trail's gonna split. So let's follow this blue wire here. So I'm coming in on black right black's 120 why because i'm above freezing and i was brown and i'm purple then i'm over here so now i'm on black again we could look at the schematics and have this figured out really quickly but we're doing it old school okay let's say we don't know how to read schematics so we're just going to follow the trail so where does blue go blue is now we're going to come back to this guy the, the, the trail has split so we're going to follow this blue wire down down where does blue go it's this one right here Okay, it's this blue wire I got my fingers on, and he is this wire right here, and he's going to come up here, and now he's going to this guy. Well, what's his purpose? What's this guy's job? He is a high-pressure switch. He's soldered on to the tube, okay? So he's a high-pressure switch. If my pressure is greater than... Um, if my pressure, the way this has worked, if my pressure is less than, I do not allow power to pass through. It's open. If my pressure gets too great, I close, allowing power to pass back through. So let's follow this blue wire back to where it goes, and then we're going to go back to our trail and see where the other wire went, okay, that goes inside of here. So let's say that my pressure is too great. I'm going to come back out this wire here. Where do I go? Where do I go? Where do I go? I'm going to come back through here. And now... I'm going to come back on my relay. Look, it's going to be the, the relay is going to switch states based on this blue electromagnetic contactor moving this. So follow with me on this. Remember the black wire that went inside of here? Okay. It could go one of two ways. The normally closed way or the normally open way. Okay. So this blue wire comes back on the normally open way and he branches off and he's going to my coil. So it looks like if this guy gets made, if my electricity goes through this, this relay changes states. So what controls my relay, which position my voltage is going, my relay is controlled from this high pressure switch. Okay? That's what this wiring schematic shows. So that trail ends, that branch. If my pressure is too great, my relay changes states. But let's go back. Again, he was plugged in right there. Let's go back to this. So if our relay is not energized because of this, we're gonna go through, we're gonna come out, and we're gonna come out on these wires here. And I've got two of them. Okay, so uh, one of them is going to the compressor. The other one of them is going to the motor. So there you go. It looks to me, so we've just finished our trail. Um, I may have made it look really simple. You can do the same thing. Full disclosure, if you look at my paint dots, two reds, one red, two yellows, one yellow. This is what I was doing at 10 o'clock the other night. I was taking my paint pins and dotting and dotting to follow the wires. But what I just explained is exactly the same thing that I did with my paint dots. But like I said, I'm a little bit pressed for time. Um, so what's happening here, the reason these two are not working is because the relay is changing states, denying power to go to these two things because of this guy. This air conditioner has not run in a long time. I'm pretty confident that it's not pressure built up into this thing. So this piece has failed. This high pressure switch has failed. Um, 
it's soldered on to this. Therefore, you can either A, call a HVAC tech that's licensed to do the kind of work and have them cut this off, put a new one on there, and solder it on there. I am in Washington State. I don't get that many air conditioner jobs. I do not feel like maintaining the licenses and all the equipment to do that for the two to three air conditioners I'm going to get each year. So I would farm this out to a uh, HVAC tech or in this instance, we're just going to replace the entire air conditioner. Okay, that's your other option. Like I said, it's a warranty job and um, let's just get it fixed. So, but let's look at the schematic. I want to show you something on here. Everything I just said, I'm going to show you on this really quick. Here's my purple wire right here, P-U-R. I come in on purple. Now here I'm going to branch off on purple. And look, I'm going to go over here to my condensate pump, okay, which is this pump right over here. You can see that one, okay. Um, so that's a dotted line, but let's just follow purple. Purple's going to come up. I'm going to go over here. I change from purple, now I'm brown, okay. I'm going to go through my free switch. Black is this normally closed. Orange is normally open. If I do go below freezing, then I go back on orange and I just land right back over here on my terminal block. That's going to go back down to um, feed back into the thermostat to tell the thermostat we're freezing. Or maybe that it, this won't work and it needs to turn on the furnace. That's how it knows to turn on the furnace and not the heat pump. But we're going to follow this black wire. Here is where our trail split. And remember it turned blue. This one was blue. He goes up here to our high pressure switch, okay? And if the high pressure switch is made, then I'm gonna allow power to come back down through here, landing on this guy right here, which is really not going anywhere other than energizing my coil. The other end of the coil is gonna be my common. Coming back up brown, going to here. I'm gonna go inside of my relay. This is the little pin that's gonna switch states. If my coil is energized, I'm gonna go down to five. This is a five. If my coil is not energized, I'm going to normally come out of two. And if I come out on two, where does this top wire go? Over here to my compressor, to my high, um, my overload, and then into my um, windings for my um, compressor. And here is the associated capacitors for that. And then the other wire comes over here to my fan motor. Okay, so when I got up here looking at the schematic, I knew exactly which wires I needed to troubleshoot. And then I was looking at the physical wires to see if there was something wrong with the physical wires. And, um, and then I was isolated each, each piece to find out that the problem is this high pressure switch. And then if you look here, you'll see that I disconnected it. I took this out of the circuit and the, the air conditioner worked just fine. Then I connected it and it didn't. Therefore, that piece has failed. Does all that make sense? So that is how I diagnosed this air conditioner. So what I want to do now is... Um, we're pretty much done with the diagnosis. We are going to pull this air conditioner up off the roof and get it down. Okay, four bolts and a connector. So I am going to disconnect all these wires up here. So at this point, we are going to pull the air conditioner off the roof, okay? Because that is not a part that I can repair. Make sense? Good. Okay, so we got the, there's four screws that hold this down, and then the whole thing just lifts up. Really easy peasy, uh, like that. And then I'm gonna bring it over. I've got another video where I make an air conditioner, a crane to hoist air conditioners up and down. I'll make a link to that video off of this video. That's how we're gonna get this 100 pound beast down and get the new 100 pound beast back up. So we're gonna carry this around over to there, and then. Um, the camera will follow so i'm just going to pick this thing up and and walk with it okay all right and really all i'm going to do is just grab it on this front piece right here here's my crane that i made i'm just going to grab it right here on this front and uh use that to uh, get it out of here and then we'll bring the new one up Okay, so there's that. 
and we'll reverse it for the uh, for the uh, new air conditioner. Okay, folks. So I've got it on the ladder here. I've got it on the cable. I'm going around the base here, and I've made it so that there's no way for the cable to slip off. I've taken the cover off because I want to make sure that I've really grabbed this at a good foundation. If you keep the cover on, you'll be wrapping the whole thing, and you might hurt your cover. I've never brought one up with a cover. A lot of times I'll bring this up still in the same box that it came in, and I'll just, you know, crisscross the box like a big wrapping present. But uh, this one came on a piece of car, uh, a wood pallet and just cardboard pieces, so it wasn't stable enough to tow it up. So we're doing it this way. Now, on the back, I've got my uh, gasket, so I do want to be careful not to rub those, so I'll be um, going up with it. Oop, that's down. That's cool. One-handed, look at this. Don't tell OSHA, but I'm gonna go up onto the load. That's halfway a joke, halfway kind of bad. Bad because if anything should happen, it's gonna come down the ladder right on top of me. But I don't want that air, air conditioner to touch my rungs, which it's starting to do. Okay, so now I'm gonna get my body up there. I'll put my need there. Let's see if I'm still nimble enough to get up on this roof. I'll tell you what, I'm gonna go around the other ladder on the back of the coach. I'll meet you on top in a second. I'm gonna go this way. Okay, here we are. Now, take my lead. I'm gonna grab this sucker right here. I don't know about you, but that's how I get air conditioners up on roofs. Ooh, that last little bit. These are the big boy heavy ones. So let me get them on the roof a little more. Okay, we are free. I own it. Come on now. Okay, okay and we'll just carry the uh, cover up. Okay, here we go, and here, and three, two, one. Okay, folks, we have the new air conditioner mounted to the ceiling, to the, to the roof, if will. Um, it uses the old control board. Again, there was nothing wrong with that old control board, so we're okay there. And um, we... Uh, We've got our freeze plug inserted. We've got all our control wires here. Um, and uh, we are almost done up on the roof. Okay, so the next step is to um, put this on. Put it on the correct way. Okay, so everything is aligned there. And at this point, I'll have the customer um, start his uh, air conditioner to make sure that it's working for us, okay? So, Eric, you want to give it a fire in a hole? It, yep, everything should work. That is the sound of success, folks. So we have uh, the fan here started, the compressor started, and this motor's running. So the sun's about to set. We still have more work to do on other projects. So um, 
So I was kind of going fast. I don't have the time to go through what each component does, but you've seen how I've troubleshot the problem. It is warranty, so we just basically called the warranty, told them the problem, and they honored a new air conditioner. If this was my personal air conditioner, I, it's a $1,500 air conditioner, okay? Um, I might actually call an HVAC guy who's licensed to do the soldering and sweating and evaporation and recharging and all that. Um, but we submitted the whole thing to warranty. They gave it their blessing to put a new air conditioner on here. We got a new AC and we swapped it out. So the benefit here is it comes with this new warranty. Um, and it is a little different, so it's a newer model. So there's a blessing there. So thanks warranty for giving us the, the blessing to, to move forward for this, for your customer, <laughs> uh, if this was the warranty. So if this was helpful, if this added value, I know it was quick and, and I'm tired and I'm going really fast a million miles an hour. We still got more to do, but if this is valuable, give me a thumbs up. That's all I ask. Uh, the algorithms like that. That's how you can thank me for these videos. And I look at those, I'm like, okay, people really do care. They're, they're, they're like liking my stuff. If you do like these kind of videos, you can find me on YouTube, My RV Works, um, because I carry you along with the camera crew and everything, and we do all kinds of repairs and things like that. So if this added value to you, give me a thumb up, thank me, subscribe to our channel, and happy camper say My RV Works. So this is Darren with the Setting Sun and Squim saying happy camper say My RV Works. Until the next video, see you later.